One of the most challenging parts of the landlord and tenant relationship is the very end. Because in the beginning, both are eager to make a great impression. The tenant pays the security deposit and the landlord offers a clean, beautiful unit. Hey everybody, I'm Santiago with DoorLoop. As you may already know, the security deposit is for any necessary repairs when the tenancy or lease agreement comes to an end. However, what exactly does the deposit cover and when should the tenant be charged a maintenance or a repair fee? Landlord responsibilities. It's important for the landlord to set exact parameters within the lease agreement of what repairs or maintenance the deposit may cover. The fact is that there are assets within the rental property that are subject to a certain amount of wear and tear, such as fittings and fixtures, which include a fridge, dishwasher, microwave, and more. Carpets and additional decorations. For carpeting, normal wear and tear may include some thinning of the carpet or dirt. A landlord should always budget for turnaround costs, and it's always worth knowing when you should not charge a tenant for cleaning carpets after they leave. In most cases, a landlord can deep clean the carpet themselves or hire a professional before a new tenant moves in. These costs should not be taken out of the security deposit and are relatively low if there is no damage done to the unit or the items within the unit. When the landlord can charge for carpet cleaning and damages. To assume that all tenants are the same and responsible would be naive. <laughs> different tenants have different behavior, with some who will care for the unit, while others will run it down, literally destroy it. <laughs> you, you may already know. If the carpet gets turned or has stubborn stains due to tenant use, the tenant is responsible for cleaning costs. The most common stains may include coffee, wine, paint, whatever you can imagine could possibly happen. In this case, if the only way that the landlord can get rid of the stains is by working with a professional carpet cleaner, deciding who pays for the cleaning can come into question. If the entire carpet needs to be replaced due to heavy stains or damage, the landlord is well within the rights to withhold the security deposit and use it for the replacement. One important thing to consider is that if you want to reduce your chances of cleaning or fighting with your tenants, <laughs> You may want to consider installing vinyl flooring instead. Also, keep in mind, the burden of proof that the carpet needs to be cleaned or is damaged is on the landlord. And for a landlord to be able to charge the tenants for carpet cleaning and damages, the following must be done before the tenant moves in. Photographs. Both the landlord and the tenant should take pictures of the unit before the tenant moves in and after they move out. This is very important so that they can document any existing issues, especially excessive wear and tear, and other damages. With the comparison of both before and after pictures, the landlord can find grounds to justify any charges they want to keep from the tenant's security deposit. Age of the carpet. Ideally, a carpet's lifespan is about 10 years, partly covered with a warranty. And at the end of the 10 years, the landlord should explore the options available to get the carpet replaced. In most cases, a landlord cannot charge a tenant for cleaning and damages if the carpet is nearing the end of these 10 years or its estimated lifespan. Wear and tear. Wear and tear are inevitable. <laughs> That's why the landlord should stipulate what type of wear and tear is acceptable. By clearly defining the parameters of wear and tear, it's clear for all parties what to expect. Clear inventory. This is a written document that includes detailed descriptions and photographs of the carpet and other fixtures and fittings within the property. It describes the carpet's state in all rooms, including even the most minor issues, for reference in the future. The tenant should review this inventory and agree in writing that all is in order before moving in. Purchase receipts. The receipts for the carpet's purchase should always be scanned or saved as they indicate the carpet's value. So that way, if the landlord needs to charge the tenant to replace part or all of the carpet, this enforces how much can be charged and ensures that overcharging does not occur. When the landlord cannot charge the tenant, 
Accountability is necessary when the landlord chooses to charge the tenant for carpet cleaning or damages. The landlord should share impeccable records with the tenant, including itemized deductions and receipts, especially if this requires the use of the security deposit. To ensure that the landlord makes the right decision, they need to familiarize themselves with state laws allowances. Each state will have laws and regulations that guide the landlords on rental practices. Where there is a lack of clarity, a property manager can always be consulted. In most states, the laws dictate that standard carpet cleaning is the responsibility of the landlord. Considerations also need to be made for normal wear and tear. Only in the cases that excess damage can be proven is when the landlord can charge the tenant. Also, the cost of cleaning the carpet or repairing the damages needs to be above the cost of standard cleaning services. Suppose the tenant has already used the professional carpet cleaning company services and can prove that they have done so. In that case, the landlord may have to face the cost of any additional carpet repairs since the tenant already hired a professional. This may indicate that it's a good time to change the carpet as it may be nearing its end of life. All right, so to wrap it up, it is possible for the landlord to charge the tenant for cleaning a carpet or damages. However, there needs to be evidence to support this. Record keeping is the best action that any landlord can take to ensure that charging the tenant is an option, if need be. After a tenant moves out, the landlord should follow their standard turnover checklists before a new tenant moves in. As you may already know, I am not an attorney and I cannot give you any legal advice, financial advice, medical advice, or anything like that. But the one thing I can tell you is that you should definitely hit that like and subscribe button right there. And if you wanna get access to a lot more content, including articles, videos, and templates for your real estate business, there's a link right there for you as well, all right? Doorloop has a ton of resources for you, okay? And uh, as always, Happy renting.